Investigators return to Pitcher, a now abandoned Oklahoma town, searching for answers in a 22-year-old case, the disappearance of Laura Bible and Ashley Freeman. The girls haven't been seen since 1999, after Ashley's parents were found dead and their home burned. It's another search that Laura's mother is not taking for granted. Our Vincent Hill has more on her new hope for her own life and for answers in her daughter's disappearance. Lorraine Bible spent her day just feet away from where searchers dug, and she says it's a day she didn't think she would live to see. I've always said that I'd go and find my daughter and I'd bring her home. Lorraine Bible visits the memorial site where suspect Phil Welch's trailer once stood, keeping a promise to her daughter and friend. Until I find Laura and Ashley, that's, that's, that's my passion. But Lorraine almost had to break that promise. Seven months ago, it went bad. I couldn't even do a whole lot. Lorraine was diagnosed with stage four liver disease. After they took my liver out, I would have only lasted two weeks. She was in desperate need of a transplant and says her prayers were answered in the midst of another's family's tragedy. So I just give it to the good Lord and, you know, the family that made that sacrifice for me to be here. And here I am. Lorraine's doctor says she is defying the odds. The doctor, he that did my liver transplant, he had read up on it in a week and he said, I don't see how you did it. I don't see how you do it. I said, well, I wasn't given that option. Keeping her word to her daughter. Well, I told the DA when we first started that I would find my child and I'd bring her home. That's what Gary Stanzel with the Cray County District Attorney's Office hopes to do. To me, it's nothing short than a God given miracle that Lorraine is sitting here today full of energy probably more than mine. That's a miracle. Stanzel says interviews with the only living suspect, Ronnie Busick, and former neighbors of another suspect, David Pennington, led them to getting pictures of Pennington's house and property from 1999. And as you can see, in October of 99, that lot was still vacant. So we surmise that people are not going to put uh, bodies in someone's backyard with someone's living there but they might put them in a vacant lot where there was a cellar or something like that. Stanzel says today's search was to find an underground structure that could be a cellar. Meanwhile, Lorraine Bible is thankful for a new chance at life so she can continue to search for her daughter. Most people tell me that they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have lasted this long. You know, and it's just by the power of the Lord and family and friends that, you know, in prayer that she can sustain it. Now that search has concluded for today and Gary Stenzel with the district attorney's office says after the expected storms pass through, they will start to resume that search. And pitcher, Vincent Hill, two works for you. Going in depth now on the case of the missing girls, investigators believe three men, Ronnie Busick, Philip Welch, and David Pennington, killed Freeman's parents, set their home on fire, kidnapped the two girls, and then later killed them. Busick, the last living suspect, was arrested in 2018. He entered a guilty plea in their disappearance and later admitted to withholding information. Busick promised to help investigators find the girls' remains, but several searches didn't turn up anything. A judge later sentenced Busick to 10 years with five years of probation. Now, the 20 year anniversary of the girls disappearance saw new phases of information come to light. Detectives developed some new leads. They analyzed more than 400 mine shafts. Even a team from the Department of the Interior helped deploying cameras early last year. To read more about the case and the search for the girls, head to our website, kgrh.com. We have a complete timeline of their story.